The government proposes that the price on carbon pollution should start at a minimum of $10 per tonne in 2018, rising by $10 each year to $50 per tonne in 2022. The federal carbon tax has Canadians across our country gripping their wallets a little tighter this week. However, carbon taxes are nothing new to British Columbians. BC has had our own carbon tax since back in 2008, and it currently sits at $30 per tonne. The federal carbon tax won't affect British Columbians until at least 2021, when the federal tax reaches $40 per tonne. So that's why we didn't hear much from Christy Clark and the BC Liberals in opposition to this new tax like we did from other provinces such as Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, or even Alberta. But even still, this federal carbon tax could do serious damage to BC. One might be inclined to think that Premier Clark and the BC Liberals are playing nice with the federal government and Justin Trudeau over his new tax given they just greenlit the massive Pacific Northwest LNG project last week, despite its 190 conditions. Well, consider this new carbon tax just one more massive condition. None of the major LNG projects appear likely to be operational before 2021, which makes this new carbon tax and even our own carbon tax in BC a huge disadvantage compared to our competitors. Australia is becoming a major LNG player with their Chevron-led Gorgon Island LNG project now fully operational. And the recent decision by Australia to scrap their own carbon tax has BC falling further and further behind in the LNG marketplace. We are basically making ourselves uncompetitive. That's exactly what a carbon tax does. It does not reduce emissions or change the weather. It makes our businesses less competitive in the global market. So our LNG prospects are certainly going to be hampered by this new tax. But what about the renewable hydroelectric Site C dam project? Surely that won't be affected, right? Well, not so fast. The project is currently priced at $8.6 billion, a bill that will be picked up by taxpayers as BC Hydro is a crown corporation. And yeah, construction has begun and there will be no additional carbon taxes till 2021, but that's three years before the expected completion date. And you can bet that $8.6 billion price tag will jump when that new carbon tax hits. Site C will be just the tip of the iceberg for the BC taxpayer come 2021. BC ferries? Count on fare increases. Hospitals and schools? Well, they'll need more tax dollars from us to pay their own carbon taxes too. As if this province and this city weren't already ridiculously expensive, and now we see a new tax coming and one that could grow even higher if some like Mayor Gregor Robertson and Vision Vancouver have their way. So that's why Premier Clark should stand up for BC, put British Columbians first, and point to our own carbon tax and say, no, Prime Minister Trudeau, British Columbians have been paying carbon taxes for close to a decade now. We can't afford any more new taxes. I'd like to see Premier Clark join Brad Wall and call on Justin Trudeau to stick with his election campaign promise he made during the Globe and Mail debate last fall. The idea of imposing a bureaucracy out of Ottawa, a cap and trade system on provinces like British Columbia that have already moved forward with a world renowned carbon tax that is actually working for them is actually uh, a completely nonsensical plan. So let me get this straight, Justin. Imposing a federal carbon tax on BC when we already have a tax is completely nonsensical. Then why on earth are you doing it? And why on earth isn't our Premier calling you out on this as Premier Brad Wall is? As I was watching all the reaction pour in over this new federal carbon tax, I was most disturbed when I heard the calls of various environmental groups and ivory tower elites who are unhappy about how low the tax is. They think that even when the tax reaches $50 a ton in 2022, that it will still be too low. Peter McCartney from the radical wilderness community based here in Vancouver was quoted as saying, this really only brings other provinces along at a level that, frankly, is really disappointing. And Simon Fraser University economist Mark Jackard insists that we actually need a carbon tax of $200 a ton to meet our Paris commitments. $200 a ton! Are you kidding me? This is all so ridiculous. The fact remains that it doesn't matter if you believe carbon emissions are the climate control knob or not when China, the world's largest greenhouse gas emitter is allowed to have unbridled emissions until their peak in 2030. And no, I'm not making this up. President Obama signed that deal with them. 
So despite the cries of environmentalists, the truth is what we do in the West as far as our emissions won't matter one bit as China continues to increase their emissions for the next 15 years, never mind India or the rest of the developing world. Now don't get me wrong, I'm glad we still have five years until this carbon tax hits us in BC, but the impacts of this tax could be felt well before then, as it's likely another reason why BC will fail to land significant LNG investment. As the economies of Alberta and Saskatchewan struggle, that hurts all Canadians. And as consumer goods see price spikes due to increased costs, well, that hurts all Canadians. And when we willingly make our nation uncompetitive compared to our neighbours and allies, well, you guessed it, that hurts all Canadians. For The Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Now, whether you're out here in BC or across the country in Newfoundland, go to StopTheCarbonTax.com and sign our petition.